So once again, Lauren Bobert is out there taking credit for things she did not do. She posted this picture and she had this to say, Great meeting with Glenwood City Councilor and former Mayor Jonathan Goads. We have secured over $51.4 million for the South Bridge. Was thrilled to hear about nearly $30 million in cost savings in addition, and that my support has helped make this project a reality. Now, the only problem with that is her support did not make that a reality. Readers were quick to add context and had this to say. Bobert hasn't secured $51.4 million for this bridge. The money came from a Biden-Harris grant that is part of the Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program, which is part of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which Bobert voted against. And the White House was really quick to call her out on this. They posted this. One thing about congressional Republicans, they're going to take credit for investments they voted against. So my question is, does Lauren Boebert really believe that her voters are this stupid? Is this her way of talking down to them? Is she saying, hey, I can say whatever I want because they're not actually following me. They're not actually holding me accountable. To me, the whole thing is really an insult to her voters because they're the ones that should be following what she's doing, following what she's voting for and voting against, and they're the ones that should be holding her accountable. But she can say anything she wants and it's gonna go right over their heads. And this whole thing got me to thinking about how back when I was a kid, I used to follow team sports, pro sports. Now don't get me wrong, uh, I'm not knocking anyone out there that does, that still follows it. I'm not knocking you at all. I still watch some games from time to time with my kids, and I really enjoy it. But back when I was a kid, I used to cheer on the Washington Redskins. And I had never been to Washington. You know, I, I, had no, I had no investment in the team whatsoever. One day I said to myself, you know what? I'm cheering them on because I like that helmet. I think that helmet's cool. I like the maroon and the yellow. I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool on a T-shirt. I realized that I was sitting there cheering people on for something that I had nothing to do with. I wasn't the one that threw the touchdown. I wasn't the one that caught it. I wasn't the one that kicked the nail bite and field goal. It wasn't me. I caught myself saying, we're looking good this year. We're doing great. And one day I said to myself, I've never been to Washington. I'm not part of the team. Uh, I just kind of like that helmet. And then I caught myself looking over and going, you know, that Pittsburgh Steelers helmet, that's pretty cool. I think I like that one now. I like that black and yellow. I like how that all goes together. And these days, you know, I think the Saints helmet's pretty cool. But, you know, you say to yourself, when people get so caught up in team sports, they will start giving that team a pass no matter what. I have seen so many. I've been watching games with people that are very fanatical about it. Their player would clearly be out of bounds, and they would say that he was in, or vice versa. Their player would clearly not be in the end zone, but they would say that he was, or vice versa. And... It got me to thinking about the type of mentality that it takes to get behind these MAGA politicians and start rooting them on and cheering for the owning the libs and cheering for the whole team instead of actually getting in there and digging in and realizing what's really going on behind the scenes. You see, I would find it insulting if someone that I voted for came out and said, I made this happen. I did this. I would be like, no, we were against that because... If she voted against it, then I would be for her voting against it, right? I mean, doesn't it make sense that her followers should be like, wait a minute, we're against that. We don't want that. But no, they take credit for it when they did nothing. And that's what you see, just like in team sports, you see people taking credit for something they had nothing to do with. You see the same exact thing happening in Magaland. And you also see them going out there and cosplaying like a team. I mean, you see Lauren Boebert dressed like this. See, to me, this here is very disrespectful to the flag. There's no way that I would ever wear a shirt like that and dress like that. I won't wear an American flag for a bandana. Uh, I know this may be extreme, but on the 4th of July, I won't allow those cups or those napkins that's got flags on it. It just feels really weird to me to be wiping my mouth on an American flag. Uh, I know a lot of people, because I lean to the left, more people would be like, oh, he's disrespectful to the flag. It's actually the exact opposite. I stand for the flag, but I absolutely support someone's right to kneel. And I would kneel alongside them and protest if I felt like it was necessary because I feel like that's what the flag is all about. But people like Lauren Boebert and everyone in MAGA, they've hijacked the flag and they use that now as part of their brand and part of their gimmick. It's part of their team. And uh, they parade around in it. And really at the end of the day, all it becomes is just tacky merch at the flea market. And for those of you that don't know what a flea market is, down south here we have these things called flea markets and it's just one table after another. Sometimes it's indoor. We still have a few outdoor ones around here. But it'll just be one table after another with random people selling merch. You may have one person selling knives. He always looks like Jake the Snake Roberts, <laughs> the wrestler. Y'all get that joke in the south. But, uh, you know, one guy will be selling knives. One guy will be selling cell phone accessories. One guy will be selling whatnot. Some lady will still be selling cassette tapes. And then there's always going to be a booth that's going to be dedicated to Donald Trump around here. Hell, we've got entire stores dedicated to him in Gatlinburg. 
and it's just the tackiest merch that you've ever seen and people puts it on and wears it just like a team and starts taking credit for things they had nothing to do with. And that's what I feel like is so wrong with American politics today is we have people taking credit for things they had nothing to do with. We have people voting against things that they don't understand. We have people voting against their own interest and they don't even realize it. And when we try to point it out to them, they're so caught up in the moment and they're so caught up rooting for their team that people like us come off like a commie for pointing it out to them. And that's one of the reasons why that I started doing content like this is because I wanted more people to be aware of what's going on. Um, I just couldn't stay quiet about the issues anymore. I couldn't sit back and, you know, for the longest time, I was just ranting to my family around the kitchen table. I was just ranting to my to my friends in the car, renting to my buddies at the bar and stuff like that, you know, just sitting there having a beer and talking about things. And people started saying to me, you know, you, you should talk more often, you should say more things, you should speak out. And I used to say to myself, ah, hell, you know, nobody would ever listen to it. Well, here we are closing in on 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I wanna thank you guys for coming along and listening to me rant and go off. But that's how I, when I look at things like this, that's how I see it. I see Lauren Boebert out here taking credit for something and I flash back to my 12 year old self taking credit for the Washington Redskins beating the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't there. I've never been to Washington. You know, it's, it, I had no real investment in it other than I wanted to be able to get on the school bus the next morning and go, yay, we did it. And Again, I'm not knocking people that watch his team sports. I'll still follow them myself. But when you when you bring that type of mentality into the political arena, I think that's a that's a dangerous thing because people like that will get fired up to vote quicker than anybody. They'll get more fired up to vote than anybody else and they'll go out there and be willing to, to go for it. And meanwhile, people who are educated and people who are up to par on everything, they start to lose faith. You know, they start to lose faith in the entire system and a lot of those people ends up staying home on election day. And that's why we can't let that happen. We have to stay focused. And we and, and I know it gets frustrating. I know that it gets to the point where it feels pretty hopeless because you're up against such a loud opponent. But we just got to keep our nose to the grindstone, keep our eye on the ball, and keep moving toward this election and vote for the politicians that have our best interests at heart. And not just our best interests, but the best interests of everybody. I don't want a politician who's just rooting for people that comes from my part of the world and looks and sounds like me. I want somebody that's out there pulling for everybody because I want everybody to have a fair shot in this world. I'm not looking to give people handouts. I just want to see people have a better hand to play. And I really, at the end of the day, think that's what the United States of America is supposed to be all about.